Buonasera a tutti, siamo qui con Terry Moore, l'autore di Serial, ovviamente che è appena uscito per Bow Publishing. Hi Terry, nice to meet you. Hi, thank you. Glad How did the idea for Serial, your latest comic, uh, came about? Oh, the answer is brutal. <laughs> We like brutal things. Okay. I live in a violent country and um, I'm really tired of predators. So like I have this thing about like all predators should die, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I don't go to therapy so I wrote a comic about it and uh, um, what I did was I took the typical scary town you would find in a movie, you know, like any of those horror movies. You know. Yeah, like Halloween. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just kind of miscast it. If you go to one of the usual horror movies, all the people like um, the the girl next door, the victim, first victim, second victim, the the scary killer on the edge of town that lives in the shack and just got out of the mental hospital, he shouldn't have. That's all those uh, horror movie tropes, mm. right? It's yeah, all yeah. corny. I took that same town with the same problem going on, but it's from the wrong people. So. Um, I, I made, instead of having big scary guy as a killer, I made it the least likely person in town, which is a 10 year old girl. And she's really good at it. She can use whatever's in the room. <laughs> If you know what's going to happen, it's not scary. If you have no idea that the 10 year old girl right over there is, your life is in danger because she's in the same room with you, that's more scary. It's better. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So when you're writing a horror movie story, yeah, that's what you're trying to do. And, um, i like the fact that the morgue uh, is involved. It's in one of the settings, the morgue. Whatever happens on the street ends up in the morgue, so it's a good place to check in on, you know. Um, but that was kind of how I got it started, was that I wanted to um, go after the big, scary, monstrous things that we have going on in our country and have the new generation, the young person, being able to zap those things you know mm -hmm. um i don't want the things same things that scared my generation to scare the children i want them to be to fix that and move on you know and one of them should be that scary guy on the edge of town that shouldn't have gotten out of the mental hospital <laughs> sure, sure, sure. <laughs> and why did you decide to have zoe that we already seen in uh, racial rising uh, as protagonist instead of a new character Um, I knew that I wanted to write a crime drama, you know, as opposed to just like a horror movie. Like Rachel Rising is a horror movie, but this serial is a more of a criminal procedure, like, mm -hmm. you know, like police detective work. Uh, like the way she tracks down the serial killer and finds the serial killer and all that. Um, so I wanted it to be one of those situations where somebody she went to school with was like one of her last friends and that person becomes the victim of a serial killer that's running around over there in one of those beach towns in California. And that's not going to work. She's going to go find him. So it's a serial killer tracking down a serial killer. Um, there's a little twist to it at the end, but that was the idea. And I'm really glad I did it. I, I, I had fun writing that procedural stuff. You know, like figure out, not, not just do a crime, but now uh, unpack it. Mm. and go backwards and like how can a stranger now find them just by what bread comes out of you have to think about what you're writing sure. how they do it and what, what clue did they leave behind and then when you get about near the end you have to think about okay now how's the serial killer going to get away with it because <laughs> they have motivation too they want to go they want to leave Your characters are extremely realistic in general in your comics, but I'm thinking in particular of Stranger in Paradise, a series that I love madly. Are you inspired by someone you know in your real life to create them, or they just come out, out of your imagination? Uh, they came out of my imagination, um, but they are composites of people that I know, like You could probably take any two or three people here and put together somebody that's in Strangers in Paradise. Um, it's just, I wanted it to be people we could relate to. Mm. And that's the reason why I drew it the way I drew it, because before Strangers in Paradise, everything I did was just cartoons. But I didn't want to do that story with cartoon characters. Yeah. I wanted it to look like the girl next door or the guy the Asian guy that you had lunch with, or Kachu. I wanted her to look exactly like that, not just like, 
you know, a, a Disney character. Sure. So I had to draw better and better, um, and I had to. I had this wicked learning curve where I had, you know, the first issue is very cartoony, and then you look at the first issue and the last issue, and they're totally different artists. And I just had to do that in public. You know, it's like growing up in public. So somebody watched me grow up for 20 years, but mm -hmm. it's weird that there's one book for all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what's weird about Strangers though is that. Um, it's not, there's not one story, there's not one plot. Like, what is the plot to strangers? There is none. It's life. It's yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. It's just a way to live with them. There's like, it's like Friends. What's the plot to Friends? You know, the TV show. Yeah, just life. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's just one thing after another, and they all just kind of... Okay. You made your debut exactly 30 years ago, and during this long career, you have produced many wonderful works. Uh, is there still any particular genre or theme that you would like to experiment in your comics? Mm -hmm. I want to go up. <laughs> space. Ah, oh, space. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I drew a... For some reason, lately, I've been drawing this astronaut woman. You know, one of my books uh, was inspired by David Bowie, his song Five Years off mm -hmm. of Ziggy Stardust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the words in that about, okay, okay, it was just on the news today, the newsman was crying, everybody's freaking out, you know, I, there, so years later, I made a book about it, um, and then there, kind of Ziggy Stardust did the same thing to me, like, I'm really interested in somebody that goes up there and there's a problem. Mm -hmm. You know, so interesting. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, you know, we're so used to just living on our planet and getting away with it. And the minute we get even a few 20,000 feet up, we're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> we're really locked into our planet. But I saw a um, comedian, a stand up comedian, say, You think you're living in Italy right now? Zoom out. You're on a rock circling around the sun which is circling around all this other stuff you know and it made me think about space and I was thinking about okay so if you oh and the new way that we're gonna go to the moon the last time we went to the moon we went straight there because that's all we could figure out with the slide rule mm -hmm. the next time we go to the moon we're gonna do one of those slingshots and we're gonna go it untethered no rope, no safety valve. If there's a problem, you're fucked. <laughs> They're going to go way out there and then slingshot back in because of the fuel. Yeah. It's a much faster way and it's much better on the fuel. But it, they're taking, you know, if there's a problem, bye. Bye bye. So I'm thinking about that. It's in my head. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait to read it. How much has the world of comics changed from your debut to today? For example, the first thing that comes to mind uh, to me is that, that 30 years ago, cartoonists didn't have any impor an important showcase like social media. Obviously. Indeed, there was no internet at all. Right. There was a letter column. <laughs> if you liked this book, you wrote a letter. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. and the cartoonists got it and they thought, oh, thank you. And now there's Twitter. The contact is gone. You know, the, mm. the feedback is gone. The real content. Yeah. There's no, there's no, used to be there would be scholars that would read these comics and then maybe you'd get a letter from them and it'd break down your whole thing like a thesis. So anyway, the communication with the reader is different now. Um, we tweet every day, but, you know, I can't remember what I tweeted yesterday. Yeah, sure. So it wasn't important. Uh, it's not like when you sit down with a pen and paper and you have to think about it and then you remember what you wrote a week later mm. that's different that's why they tell writers keep journals because when you use a pen you have to think about it more it's not the same as like oh tweet and it's the minute I send it it's gone also the um, we don't depend on two companies for work yay uh, the indie movement happened um, so I'm glad that I don't have to work at Marvel or DC. Mm. Um, the reason I don't work at Marvel, if you can ask me, <laughs> why not? No, I don't. Why not? Why don't you work at Marvel DC? Because before comics, I was in a band. Mm -hmm. I was music. Yeah. And every band I was in was a cover band, a copy band. Okay. So we played you all. You to do your own things. I wanted to, but I never got in that kind of band. And the, the problem is you can be... You can be a good cover band, a copy band, but you're going nowhere. You have no future. So if you go and draw Batman, 
uh, same thing. You're in a cover band. Mm -hmm. You are the one millionth guy to play Smoke on the Water or Draw Batman. <laughs> <laughs> I think your screenplays would be perfect for uh, cinema or TV. Why hasn't anything of that ever been made from your comics? Uh, because you have to talk a hundred people into it. And then somebody has to open up their bank account. And uh, it's really hard. And that's why they make the same thing over and over. They, you say like, you know, oh, here's a car you've never heard of ever before in your life. It's, it's a Ferrari. Yeah. I've never heard of it. I only drive Bugatti. Oh, no, the Ferrari is really, really good. Try it. You will try it. Just try it. You will not regret it. Well, how much is it? It costs this much. Oh, no, no. See, I can get a Bugatti over here. And I've had five Bugattis. I'm not going to try anything. And that's, that's exact. Okay, replace car names with movie titles. Mm. Here's my script. It's really good. Everybody in comics likes it. Your audience will like it, too. How much does it cost? We can make it for, you know, only this much. And your last movie, War of Thrones, cost that much. <laughs> It's not, it's not the creative people. The problem is with movies is not the creative people. The creative people just want to do all new stuff. The problem is you have to go to the bank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now you're talking to a stranger in a suit and a tie, and he, he doesn't give a shit. Mm. Where's my money? You know, sure, sure, sure. I'll give you this much. You give me all I can handle back. You know? So it becomes, it becomes a bet. It's a gambling bet, mm. and they won't bet on something they don't know. Okay. Go yeah, ahead, drink, yeah. drink. Yeah. You can you, drink. You know, and that's why Kevin Smith made his movie. He just ran up his credit cards because, mm. and that's why I, I do indie comics because I don't have to talk anybody into it. If I want to make cereal, I didn't have to convince somebody at the office. I just did it. Sure. Yay, indie. <laughs> It's not the first time you have come to Italy. What are your uh, positive and negative aspects of our country and our readers for you? Uh, the positive is that the people are beautiful. Yeah. And everybody, the only people I ever meet are, could be my friends, you know. Um, but I only meet comics people and art people. The be oh, it's a beautiful country, especially the north is very beautiful. Um, <laughs> the south is beautiful, but you have to walk up and down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I sit down for a living, so my legs are not strong, yeah. so, you know. I can relate to that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I sit down for a living. I do exactly what you're not supposed to do. So when I go to like, um, you know, down south where all those pretty pictures are on the hill, oh boy, um, that's what I love. And I love the culture. Um, yeah. I love um, a lot of the comics that have come from here. Um, My storytelling was influenced by even the Western comics that were made here. Wasn't that funny that Italy embraced the Western? And back in the 70s, there was, you know, the Westerns and comics that I saw. But the reason why that influenced me is because of the storytelling. Here's, mm. here's long format storytelling. And not just like, oh, Batman, somebody robbed a bank. Well, let's go do a car chase and I'll get him with the batarang. We'll be done in about 20 pages. Versus... <laughs> You know, a, a full movie in a graphic novel in 1984 was a big deal. I mean, you know, you, you get something from Europe and it was like a movie. They, they should make a movie out of that, you know. And one of my biggest thrills was finally being able to meet, like, uh, Mobius and Manara, the guys who had made these long format stories, you know. Sure. So I really, there's two things I really have rejected in my career. One is... Um, those superhero stories. Mm -hmm. A guy puts on tights and goes out at night looking for trouble. Um, I have friends like that, <laughs> but I don't, I don't particularly care for Batman. But, um, and then I just, w I wanted the freedom to do any story I wanted. You know, yeah, yeah. I like that. Ragazzi e ragazzi, questo era Terry Moore, mi raccomando, leggete le sue opere tutte per Bar Publishing in Italia, noi ci vediamo alla prossima. Thanks. It was a really a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much. Thank you.